All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here and I'll welcome you to Evening for Educators. My name is Glenna Barlow and I'm the Curator of Education here at the CMA. And I wanted to begin by thanking our sponsor for the evening and that is Bank of America. We could not have this program and so many of our other educational offerings without the generous support of our partners and sponsors. So big thanks to them. And thank you to those of you who gave to the CMA and other very deserving nonprofits during uh, Midlands Gives this week. So thank you for your generosity. And thank you to all of you teachers who are joining us today. Um, just thank you for being with us this evening. And I wanna wish everyone a very happy Teacher Appreciation Week. This year, perhaps more than any other, I don't have to tell you, has been taxing with so many challenges and demands that you probably never envisioned when you set out to teach. So I just wanna let you know how appreciative we are of everything you do. So today's session is all about helping to provide a little bit of a respite from the difficulties that have made up your reality for the last eight plus months or so. We hope this will give you a little bit of respite and just time to relax, rejuvenate, refresh, so that you're ready to tackle the home stretch of the school year. And for those of you who are local, I hope you were able to pick up your little swag bag. Um, that was uh, just something we wanted to do, a little treat from us to you. Um, maybe you're enjoying your, your cocktail or your mocktail, wherever you are now. Um, and I do wanna just remind everyone that we have free admission for teachers all week. Uh, and we um, all year long, we have deep discounts on our educator memberships. So that's just $15 for you or $30 for two adults and all the children in your household for a whole year of membership. So um, that's a great savings. That's either a savings of 40 or $50 and that lasts the whole year. So if you are nearby, if you're close to Columbia, I hope you'll consider becoming a member, taking advantage of those great educator discounts and, um, and joining us at the CMA. I was just gonna give you a brief introduction to two of the exhibitions that are coming up next. Um, and this is gonna be very brief, like five minutes for both of them, but they are both six gallery exhibitions just like Escher is right now. But rather than one single artist, there will be a panoply of various artists in these two exhibitions. So the first one is called The Ironic Curtain, Art from the Soviet Underground. I'm really excited about this. Both exhibitions are coming from private collections, which give us a great opportunity to show work that's not usually available. This work is not really known by anyone very well because these artists were literally working under an authoritarian government where you, if you were gonna be an artist, you had to make work that looks like this. You had to make propaganda, um, socialist realist propagandistic paintings that was realist. You could not make abstract art. And the fact that the Russian avant-garde in the teens and 20s had been leaders in avant-garde uh, abstraction, that history was hidden from artists um, starting in the 30s. You could actually be purged if you were an abstract artist. So at the same time, you'll see that this painting was from 1949. Artists in the Soviet Union would get tiny glimpses of work from the West uh, either through books or through private collections in someone's apartment, or perhaps there'd be a window for just a moment where you might see something like Jackson Pollock, which was already blowing minds in America of, is this art? But it's really, it's just expressive freedom. That really kind of blew the doors off for the artists in the Soviet Union. So they, because it was illegal to show their work and make unofficial art um, outside the government system, they would show their work either in private apartment shows or out in fields. And this is a famous bulldozer exhibition from 1974, which got its name because it was bulldozed down by the KGB. I'm gonna admit someone here um, and hope that goes away. Okay, so some of the famous artists in the show are Ilya Kabakov. He's one of the famous Moscow conceptualists. He's in a gallery all about this idea of escaping in your mind. Um, he has these, he was also, his official artwork for the government was as a children's book illustrator, but his work was so much about escapism, escaping from the confines of your apartment, from boredom, from the system. Um, and here's an example of a sculpture by Leonid Sokov, meeting of two sculptures. You've got Lenin and Giacometti, very much, um, you know, confrontation of the East and the West, existentialism, authoritarianism, all kinds of things to be discussed in a work like this. 
uh, photography is going to be beautifully represented, surprising images, things you've never seen, photographers you've never heard of, wonderful work that was coming out of so-called amateur um, photography clubs. Um, and then also some of these artists, in order to sort of escape the system in the 70s and 80s, some of them came to New York and were taking on uh, the American system and, and using the same level of irony and objectivism um, to look at our own system. So that is the summer exhibition. It'll be July 3rd to September 12th. So we're just touching the fall semester. Then October 9th through Martin Luther King Day in January, we've got 30 Americans, which I'm also over the moon about. Again, 30 individual amazing artists. This is such a huge opportunity. We'll have Nick Cave sound suits. These are always a wildly popular um, draw, this idea of performance. There will be painting, sculpture, film, video, prints, assemblage. Um, it's going to have just a full range. Uh, Micheline Thomas, Glenn Ligon, he's one of my personal favorites. I absolutely adore him. There will be adult themes in both these exhibitions. I will say that. I mean, um, Nina Chanel Abney, uh, just be aware, you know, the conversation USC, for example, is really excited about hopping onto um, some of the, the, the Russian history, the political history of the Ironic Curtain. Um, and 30 Americans will obviously have uh, important themes as well, um, clearly. So, two exhibitions to look forward to. I'm going to stop sharing. I look forward to seeing you all at these exhibitions and I will see if I can get Glenna back. All right. Well, thank you so much, Catherine, um, for sharing some of those exciting updates that are coming our way in the summer and the fall. I'm just going to share a few resources from the CMA's website with all of you um, and just, just wanted to let you know a little bit more of what we have to offer all the time uh, on our website. So hopefully nothing goes wrong this time. <laughs> All right, I think we still got it. <laughs> okay, um, do just ping me if something looks awry on your end. Okay, well, thank you all again for joining us. I just wanted to kind of shout out some of the resources that are available on our website. So this is columbiamuseum.org, our website. And if you go up to menu, that's really where you'll find everything. So if we swing down here to the learn section, you'll see a whole page dedicated to educators. So this is where I live a lot of the time. And you'll see we have a number of different resources available to you in our different sections. So I'm just gonna call out a few of these. In our lesson plans and resources section here, you can see we have image sets that include various uh, images from uh, images of actual objects and, and paintings and works of art in our collection. So you can download these kind of curated kits that have um, that are organized around different themes for various grade levels. And then there's a lesson plan that goes along with them. And we do always try to incorporate those in, in Word document format so that they're easy to adapt for your students. So these are all available to you anytime on the website. Just click that little button that says download and those will go right onto your device. So those lesson plans and resources are always available to you. We've also got continuing education opportunities. So we have workshops periodically, and we are going to make those available as uh, in-service workshops as well, where you can book those for a team. If you want to bring your whole team or a whole group of teachers to the CMA to do in-depth activity, activities and, and have interesting discussions around various topics, we do them on social studies, mindfulness, design, uh, visual arts and, and ELA and making those connections. So those will be available for the next school year as well. And we are kicking that off with one offering in July on mindfulness and trying to just kind of get back to social emotional learning and, and try to, you know, repair some of the, some of the tough things that we all went through this past year. Um, so keep an eye out for those opportunities. All right, you'll notice that we do have both virtual and our regular on-site field trips available. We are offering on-site field trips. That are, the groups are quite limited at the moment, and I know you all are very limited in how many people you can bring and what you can do in terms of transportation. 
But uh, like you, we don't know exactly what the next year is going to look like, but we are hoping that we'll be able to return to something like what this image looks like, where we have a studio component with all of our field trips and we can have a little bit larger groups in our spaces. But regardless of what that in-person field trip option looks like, we are going to continue with our virtual offerings. So just to give you a sense of what those look like, we have a few different options. One of these is a pre-recorded video tour. So you are sent an actual video file that's um, that's we took here in the galleries and it's around different themes that we offer. So you can see these are available to explore based on different age groups. You can download a pre-visit guide if you wanna learn more about the topics that we cover. And then if you feel like you wanna book one of these, you just click on the book yours button and that'll take you to an online booking form and you can do it right then and there. If you are curious what these look like, we do have a free one that we're offering up to everyone. And you can just watch that um, just to get a sense of what those tours are like, or you're of course welcome to use that in your classroom as well. That's from our, our exhibition last summer. And then we have live options as well. So if you're interested in more of a dynamic interactive uh, exper experience for your students, um, we can do that as well. And so we can facilitate those. Again, you can take a look at the different listings down on the program choices. And I do wanna call out, um, we have a number of these available, but one that we've recently added is our AP Art History offering. So um, this focuses mainly on the works from the 250 that are in East and a little bit of Central Asia. So if that's something you're, you're teaching or you're looking to teach next year um, and you wanna supplement that experience with, um, with something other than your, your own lectures and discussions, we, are, we have that available for you as well. All right, so those are our virtual field trip options. As I say, those will be available next year, as well as our field trips in-house where you can, of course, interact with the, the artwork firsthand, which is what we all love to do. All right, so if we come back down here, of course, we've got our educator benefits. So do take advantage if you are local. I wanted to call out a brand new offering that just went live on the website. This is our LEAF program that we partnered with Congaree National Park on. So. Um, you can download all of the contents of this virtual field trip. So that includes lesson plans in art and science. It includes video files that, are, that have a nature walk, uh, science experiments conducted by the rangers on site at Congaree National Park, a gallery walk up here in our collection galleries to look at landscapes, and then a studio project where students create their own landscapes that dive into erosion, deposition, and weathering. So those are brand new, all accessible and available to you on our website. And then I wanted to call out just one last thing before um, we turn to uh, our activities for the evening. And that is the MacArthur Goodwin Award. So it is almost time for us to solicit nominations and select another winner for this year's MacArthur Goodwin Award. I am sure that all of you know some teacher or, or many teachers who are deserving this year, who have just risen to the occasion, even in this difficult time and gone above and beyond in incorporating the arts into their classrooms into uh, into their their learning sessions. So if you know someone, please nominate them so that we can honor them at our next evening for educators in the fall, which um, I'm hoping by then we'll be back in person and uh, interacting together again. Um, but do nominate those those folks out there who are doing great work. I'm sure you are one of them or uh, or know some of them as well. All right. And then if you want to keep in touch with us, of course, you can always um, add your email there. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Hopefully uh, everyone can still see and hear me. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to dive into the evening's activities. So we are going to start with some slow looking at art and that's going to prime us for some mindful art making and then we'll round out the evening with some gentle restorative chair yoga. So I'm going to begin by just taking a moment to consider the case for slow looking. So why bother to really slow down and dive into a work of art? Well, a lot of what we do at the museum has to do with visual literacy. So um, in other words, visual literacy really is the power of learning to read images in the same way that we decipher and understand text. So always the first step with visual literacy and this emphasis on reading an image is to slow down and really look at a work of art. And, um, uh, and it's just a quick statistic. On average, when in, someone's in a museum or a gallery, a person will look at each piece of art for about 30 seconds on average. So 
that might be enough time to take in the whole image, but it's probably not enough time to really give some thought to how it was created, its significance, its deeper meaning. And if we think about it, most art has taken hours and hours with lots of planning and thought to produce. So it's not totally unreasonable to suggest that we could get a lot more out of the experience by taking some time to just dive a little bit deeper and whether you know that's on your own in a museum or another space or in a guided practice, like uh, something like what we'll do tonight. So we're not gonna spend a full hour looking at a work of art together. We're not gonna go quite that in depth this evening, um, but we're gonna do kind of an abridged version of that slow looking session. So I'm hopeful that this will still have a meaningful, um, it, this will still be a meaningful experience for you and that you'll be able to explore some aspects of this work of art that you might not notice at first glance. So I'm gonna turn my camera off so that we can just all really focus on the work of art. And so let me just pull that up. And as we go through this exercise, I wanna just invite everyone to take a moment to just kind of recenter yourself and um, make sure you're in a comfortable position. You're in a place where you feel like you can relax. Um, release your shoulders if you find that they're up by your ears. Unclench your jaw if you notice that your jaw is really tight and clenched. And let's just start by taking a few breaths together. And as you do, just really allow yourself to be in the moment and enjoying the experience. And also just, um, just try to maybe close your eyes. And we're gonna just take a few breaths together. Um, we're gonna try to keep our focus on the image, but if you find your mind wandering, just let a thought drift by. And when you have a moment, bring your attention back to the work of art. So as you breathe, you may wanna, again, just close your eyes if that feels natural to you. And as you breathe in, think of a color that has a calming effect for you. So whatever color that might be, think of that as you breathe in. And as you exhale, picture a color that you associate with an uncomfortable sensation. So one more time, let's just breathe in that calming color and we'll breathe out that anxious color. Okay, so now we're gonna turn to our painting. So if you've closed your eyes, go ahead and open them up. And we're gonna start by examining the full image. So I want you to really take your time here. You can get a sense a little bit of the scale of this work on the wall, uh, but we're gonna look a little bit deeper. So we're gonna go a little bit closer. But as we start, I want you to just really take in the whole image. So let your eye rest on the canvas and let it really travel around the image. So explore maybe all four of the corners, trace a line throughout the image. Maybe you're going from side to side following the frame. Maybe your, your eyes are making an X traveling through the image, but let your eyes land on different parts of the composition here. And I invite you to notice how your eyes are moving through this space. What are you drawn to? Which areas of the painting are really speaking to you or grabbing your attention? Is there a particular area that you're gravitating towards? So just notice that and try to reflect on why that might be. Why are you gravitating towards one area of the canvas. And then try to notice another portion. If you've been really focused in on one section, move your eyes to another spot. Just let them go where that, wherever the painting leads you and see if you can notice something else that maybe you didn't see before. All right, so now what I'd like you to do is just again, close your eyes or um, look away from the image and try to imagine this painting in your mind's eye. 
So what elements stood out to you the most? What elements really stand out in your image, in your head that you recall from this painting? What are the aspects that, that you keyed on and that you're envisioning now? Which parts are you having a hard time trying to remember? All right, now let's open our eyes again and return to the painting. So notice those areas that you found difficult to recall, reflecting on maybe why that might be. And then compare your envisioning of the image to certain areas that, that you were picturing that you did remember. So compare your mental image with this one and see if anything else jumps out at you now that you've tried to recreate it in that way. Okay. Well, now we're going to take a closer look at some other areas of the painting. So we're going to go out a little bit and then zoom in a little closer so that you can see some more of the details that maybe we didn't get at first glance. So first we're going to go to the back of the painting. We're going to go to the farthest area where you can see deep in the distance, the mountains, that atmosphere, the clouds. So just let your eyes fall on this part of the scene and notice some details that maybe you weren't able to see before. So notice what colors you're seeing in the image, where you're seeing areas of light and dark. And just let your eyes rest on the background. All right, now we're going to move a little bit forward in our image. So we're going into the middle ground and these trees. And we're just going to travel up these trees as though we are looking up at them and into the sky above us. So what do you notice here that maybe escaped your attention before? What details can you see that you weren't able to see when we were looking from farther away? Note how you feel as you look at this part of the canvas. Again, notice what colors you're seeing and think about what sensations those colors bring to mind. All right. And now we're coming a little bit closer into the foreground. So here again, notice what details and elements of the piece you can see that perhaps you were not able to see earlier. How does this part of the canvas seem a little different than perhaps the background or the trees? that we just saw? Does this environment feel different? And now we're gonna take a look at some of the details we may not have been able to see in our initial view. So notice these figures here. Let's just imagine for a moment what they're doing what they might be saying to one another if they're speaking, how all of these figures might interact. So consider their connection to one another, what they're doing and how they fit into this larger scene. And if we zoom back just a little bit, can see where they fit into this landscape. You can see their 
rather small figures in terms of the scale of this piece. So consider how they fit into the overall work of art and perhaps why the artist chose to include them. All right. Now, as we move out to see the whole canvas again, we're just gonna back up a little bit so that you can see the whole view here. And I want you to consider yourself as though you were in the painting. So imagine you are here within this painting. Where would you be? What would you be doing in a scene like this? So which area in this scene is really calling to you? What could you imagine yourself doing if you were in this place? Is this a place you'd like to be in? And now as we're standing inside this image, I want you to consider your senses. Are there sounds that you might hear? What sounds might those be if you're in this space? Are they calming sounds, anxious sounds, chaotic sounds? How would you feel in this space? What do you think the weather is like? How do you think that might affect how you're feeling in this space? And are there other things, other textures you might be able to feel in this space as well? What would you smell in this space? What do you think it would smell like in this environment? All right, so now that we've taken a moment to imagine we're within this space, we're gonna step back out of the painting and just turn our attention to how the artist achieved those different effects that we had been noticing. So we're gonna look at some smaller details again. So here I'm gonna invite you to consider the different lines that the artist is using. What kinds of lines do you see? What kinds of forms or shapes really stand out to you in just this one small piece of the artwork. Right. Here we have another, oops. We have another section of the work of art. And I'd invite you to just notice the colors. What kinds of colors do you notice? Which of them seem brighter? Which seem more dull? Are they natural or garish? What do you see here? Right. And then finally, I want you to pay attention here to the brush strokes that you see. Do you see short, choppy brush strokes? Do you see longer brush strokes? Think about how the artist achieved these different textures in this work of art, how he used different colors for different effects. So just take a moment to consider how this painting was created and all of the small components that came together to create this larger work of art. All right, so now we're gonna step back out of the painting again. We're just gonna pan out again so that you can see this painting where it is in our galleries and I know that wasn't a full slow looking session. We could have gone much longer and I'm sure we could have dived deeper into this work of art, but I hope that you made some observations that you maybe might not have otherwise. So feel free to share any reflections or ideas or thoughts that came to mind in the chat. But I hope you found that a 
fruitful exercise in terms of slowing down and making some observations about what you see in a work of art when you really slow down to try to appreciate it and just examine it for longer than maybe you might have otherwise. All right. Well, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that brief little window into what slow looking at art can do. You can go in all different directions with slow looking, of course, but I hope that you enjoyed that experience and got a little something out of it. Um, and yes, this painting was by Thomas Doughty, and I'll put that in the chat as well. This is a, he's a Hudson River School painter whose work is featured in our collection as well as others. So I'm gonna put that in the chat for you. And yeah, thank you for bearing with us. I know we're working with technology and it's not quite the same as being there in person. And of course, uh, seeing the work firsthand is how we all want to experience it ideally, but we, uh, we're making the best of it <laughs> this year. Well, thank you so much for joining us in that. All right, so now, Hopefully you, um, we, we got a little bit of something out of that art looking. Oh, great. Yeah, so it seems like even you sometimes get even closer than maybe you're, you're allowed to in a museum setting. So that is sometimes the benefit of technology too. All right, so from here, we're gonna turn from art looking to art making. So if you haven't already, um, you're gonna wanna grab a piece of paper. So um, whatever size works for you, but do grab something that you can make some marks on. And we're gonna need some tools. So ideally something like chalk pastel or oil pastel um, works really well. So you can kind of use your hands and blend. But if you don't have that, something like crayons or colored pencils will work well too. Um, so take a moment to gather whatever materials you might need. And I'm gonna turn things over to a, lump, a local Columbia artist whose name is Julie Hansard. And she's gonna tell you a little bit more about what she does. And, um, and she's gonna guide you through this practice. So take just a moment to grab those materials that you need. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna get our next activity ready to go. Hello and welcome in to Mindful Art and Meditation. My name is Julie. I'm a local artist here in Columbia, South Carolina, and I am so glad you are joining us today. First and foremost, I just want to say a huge thank you to our teachers and educators. I know this year has been really difficult and you have all done such an amazing job teaching our students and sharing others about art. Um, I am so appreciative and please know that you are loved and necessary. Usually this workshop lasts about an hour and a half, um, so you are just seeing a very small version of it today. I start with a 15 minute meditation followed by an hour or so of art instruction. I created this workshop to be accessible to all types of people. For those who do not think they have the abilities to create art or the time to do so, as well as for artists who are not allowing themselves to have that safe space to create just for the sake of creating. We often force expectations on our work um, and perfectionism rather than allowing ourselves to play. One of my favorite parts of this workshop is pointing out to students how different everyone's art looks even when given the same instruction. It puts a special emphasis onto their own creativity and shows just how unique they are. While teaching this workshop, I constantly incorporate encouragement into the instruction. I remind them that they are brave for trying something new and that no one has to see what they create today if they do not want to. This helps provide a safe space for those who are anxious about creating art and feel as if they are not creative at all. I usually recommend pastels for this activity because you can be so physical with it. Um, by just using your fingers, you can spread the chalk around, you can make textures, blend colors, much easier than some other mediums. I often also incorporate stretches, finger exercises, hand exercises, to remind students that creativity can be a physical and full body experience. They're having to think about your instructions while making creative decisions. They're using both dominant, non-dominant hands. They're limiting their color palette, so they have to choose where they're putting those colors and being physical with the art that they are actually creating. 
All these little things create an environment that does not stifle creativity, but gives students safe boundaries to work within. Let's get started with our workshop today. Put on some lovely music, pause whenever you need to, allow yourself to create today for the sake of creating. Enjoy. Let's start by getting into a comfortable position. You're welcome to lay down on the floor. You can sit with your legs crossed or if a chair behind a desk is most comfortable for you, that is completely fine. Let's go ahead and close our eyes. Roll your shoulders slowly forward and slowly back. Lean your head from side to side lowering your left ear towards your left shoulder and then your right ear towards your right shoulder relax your muscles feel your hands get heavy feel them grounded against your legs or against the floor your body will continue to relax as you meditate let that stillness wash over you. Observe your breathing. Notice how your breath flows in and out. Make no effort to change your breathing in any way. Just simply notice how it breathes. Your body knows how much air it needs. Imagine your breath flowing gently in and out of your body. When your attention wanders as it will, just focus back again on your breathing. Notice any stray thoughts, but don't dwell on them. Simply let the thoughts pass. You are still and quiet. You are safe. See how your breath continues to flow deeply and calmly. Notice the stages of a complete breath from the inhale to the pause that follows, the exhale and the pause before taking another breath. Feel the air entering through your nose. Picture the breath flowing down into your lungs. As those thoughts intrude, allow them to pass and return your attention to your breathing. Feel your chest and stomach gently rise and fall with each breath. The first step to anything is a breath. One breath is forward. One breath begins healing. One breath is progress. Notice now how your body feels. See how calm and gentle your breathing is, how relaxed you are. Now it's time to gently reawaken your body and mind. Keeping your eyes closed, notice the sounds around you. Feel the floor beneath you, feel the clothes against your body, feel the weight of your hands. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Shrug your shoulders. We're going to put movement back into our bodies, our fingers, our hands, as we transition into this next session of creativity. 
If you're lying down, you can now slowly move into a seated position and you can open your eyes when you feel ready. Raise your arms high above your head, bring your palms together and down into heart center. Feel your breath. Inhale with me and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Let's pause here for a moment. Allow yourself to be creative today without any pressure. No one has to see what you create. Thank yourself for trying something new. Maybe it's something outside of your comfort zone. Allow yourself the freedom to draw and explore today. Let yourself be intuitive. Quiet any thoughts of comparison and competition. Creativity can be so healing. Let's see how our bodies and minds can connect to colors and shapes and lines. Let's start by getting out a sheet of paper. Which color is standing out to you the most today? Take that color and lay it on its flat side. We're going to push it back and forth against our paper, up and down, side to side. We're just creating a soft background. Back and forth, slowly, quickly. Notice the control that you have. Try changing the pressure. You can choose different areas to focus on, spending more time in one or two areas than another. When you're pleased with that, take a second color and do the same thing, but let this color have its own space. Let it overlap and mix with your first color. Use both your hands and push the color around. All that extra dust and chalk. Let's see how we can blend those into the paper. See how your hands can manipulate the colors? Can your fingers create new textures and patterns within those colors? With a new color, create a unique shape in three different sections of the paper. These shapes can have jagged lines or smooth edges. And you can color those shapes in. Let's get a new color. Now, without lifting up your pastel, create a line that touches all four sides of the paper. It can be a straight line, curved, jagged. It can twist and swirl. Change the pressure, make the line thick by pressing down really hard, or lighten the touch so that it's barely even visible. But be purposeful with this line. You know what direction you're going in, so take your time with it. It's amazing all the different possibilities we can come up with when we're given the same instructions. Draw three circles with your dominant hand. They can be big or small, in the center of your page or in the corner. They can touch and overlap or be completely separate. The choice is up to you. Continue tracing over the circle. Allow different lines to form a more accurate circle. Now take your non-dominant hand and draw one more circle. 
choose two circles to color in with your non-dominant hand. After you've shaded in your two circles, feel free to take your hands and blend and play with the colors and lines you have just created. For the next minute or so, we're going to draw small lines or dashes. They can be vertical or horizontal. Move them across the page or have them concentrated in one area. Next, we're going to draw three long lines. Make them thick or thin, straight or curved. Now let's look at our pieces from a little further back. Notice how it can look different depending on how close you are to the paper. What do you think this piece needs to make it look complete? Are there any areas that stand out to you and seem unfinished? If so, intuitively use shapes or lines or colors to make this piece seem whole to you. I'll give you about three minutes. Let's start working on a new page, a blank slate. Anything that you held back on the last page, try on this new one. Remember, don't try and make this one perfect or resemble anything you've seen before. The goal here is to just create. 
creating and expression is such an important part of being human, no matter what the outcome is. Now I want you to pick your favorite color and then four colors that you think will look to good together with it. So five colors total. These are the only colors we are going to be using on this piece. A limited palette can help force us to be more intentional with how we're using those colors. Maybe one of the colors stands out above the rest. Maybe the colors are all next to each other on the color wheel. Maybe they're all cool colors, or maybe they're all warm colors, or maybe they just all stand out to you today. Choose one color and create a shape. Does it have sharp angles and edges, or is it round and curved? Now create that same shape again, surrounding the first one, leaving a little bit of space in between. Do this eight times, making the shape larger by drawing the outlines around it or inside of it. With the second color, draw one really big shape and color it in. It can overlap your previous shape or take up another part of the paper. With a new color, create a pattern on top of this big shape. It could be a checkerboard, simple lines, diamonds, triangles. Just make a repeating pattern. Creating repetitive patterns can be very therapeutic and is a practice that has been around for centuries. It's easy to just get lost and zone in on the patterns you're creating, and it can be very peaceful. With a new color, draw a unique line that sweeps and flows on a part of the page. Now draw two lines on either side of it that mimic that same design. Now flip your page upside down. Notice how different it looks. It's a whole new piece. Some people like this new perspective better. Sometimes other people absolutely hate it, but you'll never know which one you like more until you try. Now let's look to see if there's any spots in the piece that seem unfinished to you, just like we did in the last one. Now I use the same patterns and shapes that we've already used and fill in those empty spaces. Maybe the shapes are in a new color, maybe they're filled in when they weren't before, 
maybe some are big, some are flipped upside down. Using the same ones, just fill in those empty spaces to make the piece feel complete to you. Decide from which angle you want the piece to be seen from. Maybe you really liked it once you flipped it upside down. Maybe you want to revert it back to how it was before. I'll give you a couple minutes to finish it up and add some elements to it. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a really nice time and got some ideas with how to incorporate this into your own classroom and maybe your own art practice as well. I will include a little note with some more insight into why I chose the things I did um, and also my contact info if you have to reach out with any questions or just want to stop for a chat. Um, but thank you so much again. Have a great day. Well, I hope that was soothing. I hope you enjoyed that practice and just kind of got lost in the art making process. Um, I would be happy, I'll be happy to share the materials that uh, Julie was referencing um, out to everyone who's, who's registered for today's session. Um, and we can, um, be, we'll be happy to share some of these files with you if you're interested. So just feel free to reach out afterwards. Uh, but now we're going to shift gears a little bit again, and the last portion of our evening is going to be a relaxing, gentle session of chair yoga. And this is going to be led by Stacy Collins of City Yoga, 
So again, you're gonna to wanna to find a comfortable spot um, where you can kind of spread out. You've got a little bit of room. Feel free to turn your camera off or whatever you wanna to do to make yourself feel comfortable. And with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Stacy. Hi, my name is Stacy Milner Collins. I'm the owner of City Yoga here in Columbia and the program host of the PBS show Yoga in Practice, which airs each morning here in South Carolina at 630. It is my great honor to be able to be with you all tonight to give you a little bit of movement, doing some chair yoga and some self-care. It's been quite a year for all of us, um, but as a former middle school teacher myself, I have a deep, deep appreciation for the very hard work that you all have put forth this year. The um, difficulty it must have been to have to jump immediately online and then to negotiate hybrid classes and kids in person and just not understanding, um, like us all, where it was going. But for you particularly, taking care of our students and helping out the families, we're deeply, greatly appreciative. In the yoga tradition, they speak of something called equanimity. And when you hear this word equanimity on its own, it seems like a hard concept to grasp, let alone embody. But if you consider equanimity as the idea of perspective, think about walking up a mountain and getting to the very top of the mountain and you can see very far into the distance. When we are in the thick of life, in the very difficult days, it's very easy to get mired in the details, the, the stuff that drives us crazy, really, that can lead to ill health and stress and anxiety. But yet, if we consider the ability to step back, to walk up that mountain, to gaze out into the distance and to notice the big perspective that helps us to live our lives in a more balanced way. So it is my hope that you are able to gain some of that perspective, to recognize all that you have learned, all that you have given to people over this year, to be able to appreciate the many talents and great gifts that you have and the importance in the fabric of society that each of you as teachers give to us all. So thank you for that. So today we're gonna do a little short uh, chair yoga session that it is my hope you can bring into your life a little bit more when you're sitting at your desk and maybe have a few minutes just to open and stretch, knowing that opening, breathing, stretching intentionally can reduce some of that stress and anxiety and also just lead to more health and well-being, health of shoulders, hips, and low back. So where you are, make sure you're in a good seat, that your chair that you are on is secure, that it's not going to slip and slide too much. And then I invite you to sit in that chair, slide forward a little bit, and place your feet up underneath your knees. Once your feet are up underneath your knees, spread your toes and feel the floor beneath you. It's best to practice without shoes on. So if you have the opportunity to remove your shoes, I recommend that. Then hugging in with your knees, lift up through the side of your waist and draw the top of your shoulders back and just rest your palms down on the midpoint of your thighs so that your arms feel relaxed and your elbows hang right beneath your shoulders. Please close your eyes. We'll begin with our eyes closed just to give us an opportunity to pause, to take a few deep breaths. And I invite you as you inhale, inflate through the body, but as you exhale, feel as if you are releasing stress and tension and allowing yourself physically to feel more grounded and mentally to become more present right here where you are, in the room that you are sitting in. Noticing the soles of your feet. It's pressing into the floor, spread your toes gently. And then from the feet, bring your awareness upward into your legs, into the core of your pelvis. 
and feel the pelvis, the hips, the sit bones pressing into the seat of your chair. As you lift upward through the spine, keep your chin slightly lifted. Move your head back a little bit. Then imagine you're holding a heavy object on the crown of your head and that you push upward through that object just to keep it balanced and steady. And now notice the space around you. Feel the air touching your skin. Enjoy the inhale and the exhale. Give yourself these next several minutes just to focus on your breath, on the gentle movement of your body, and to honor yourself and to honor all the hard work that you have put in this year. From that perspective, I invite you to fold your hands together, palm to palm, right in the center of your chest. Feel the pressure of your hands gently and keep your shoulders lifted onto your back. In this gesture, we are able to just honor ourselves, to honor our colleagues. It certainly is a task, a job that can't be done alone. So may you honor yourself and to each other tonight for a job accomplished well. Keeping your hands together and your eyes closed, inhale, lift your arms above your shoulders. And as you press your hands together, gently pull your arms toward your ears and feel your waist lengthen just a little bit more. Then as you do, exhale, open your arms out to the side, keeping your palms lifted, turned toward the ceiling. Roll your shoulders back and draw your shoulder blades closer and let them rest flat to your back. When you exhale, fold your hands back to your chest. Then inhale, raise your arms up again. Exhale, open your arms wide, follow your breath. Good, take a deep breath. And when you exhale, fold your hands together back to your heart. And we'll do that one more time. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, open your arms wide. Breathe in and join your hands together. Good, raise your arms one more time above your shoulders and then separating your hands so they're about shoulder distance apart, open your eyes. With your eyes remaining open, stretch upward through your arms and now lower your left hand to the edge of your chair, the arm of the chair if you have an armchair, and then lean to the left. As you lean to the left, press into your right foot, into your right hip and thigh, and lift up through the waistline, keeping your head drawn back. Then inhale, raise back up to the middle, lifting your left arm. When you exhale, lower your right hand to the edge of the chair. Push down gently and then lean to the right. Stretch through your elbow and try to keep your arm close to your ear and just open through your waistline. Inhale, raise your arms back up. And then with you exhale, take your arms down next to your chair and roll your shoulders backward a few times. Just moving nice big circles, opening the shoulder blade region up through the neck. Relax your jaw. Now let the hands hang, just shake your hands a little bit. Move your fingers, turn your wrists in circles. Good. And then release down, lift your arms overhead one more time. And this time interlace your fingers above your head and push your hands toward the ceiling. And then bring your hands forward in front of your chest and extend your arms away from your chest. Lower your chin down and push your rib cage toward the back of your chair, rounding your back gently. With your next inhale, raise the arms back up. And then exhale, release the hands and either hold the side of your chair or interlace your fingers behind your lower back. Pull the shoulders back and feel that uprising lift through the chest. Take a deep breath and stretch down through your arms. Now, as you reach your arms down, either into the side of the chair or behind your back, lift your chin, look up and just do a little back bend here, arching the back. 
keeping your hips and feet well grounded. Good, and then exhale, release, and just come back to a neutral position. Shake your hands again. Good, now lifting your right knee up into your chest, hold on to the shin bone and pull up. Try not to slump over here because keeping lift in your spine is gonna help create space into which you can breathe. Now move your right ankle, point and flex the foot a few times, and then turn the foot in circles, one direction, and then reverse that direction. Good, and then release this right foot out in front of you, pressing the heel into the floor in front of you and place your hands on your thigh. Now lift up through your spine, try not to round your back, but keep your back nice and straight and then lean out over your legs. Pull the right foot up, pressing the heel into the ground and just feeling maybe the back of the calf, the hamstring muscle and enjoy the breath. And then inhale, raise up to the middle, step that right foot in. And then inhale, lift your left knee, hold the shin bone. You can also hold up underneath the knee as that, if that's easier. And then lift your spine, sit up nice and tall. Breathing, move your foot a few times. So mostly what you wanna do is don't hold the breath, that balanced action of the breath, just focusing on the inhale and the exhale creates some release of stress and tension. Check in with the face. Is it tightening up or can you relax your eyes? Turning your foot in circles. And then take your left foot, extend it forward. Place both hands on your right leg, lift your spine, and then hinge forward right from the front of your hips. Keep your toes pulling back toward your shin bone, toward your kneecap. And you should feel a little deeper stretch there come into your legs. And then with your inhale, lift back up, step your foot in, and then step your feet apart, turning your toes out slightly. Now make sure you're more on the front edge of your chair, but your hips are fully supported on the seat. With your hands on your legs, roll your shoulders back, and then again, hinge forward. But this time we're gonna go all the way down, bowing between your legs, relax your head down, and then let your arms come down to the floor. Now, if that creates any discomfort, you can just keep your hands resting on your thighs. But I want you to release your head completely and just move it side to side. Maybe lift your chin up and down a few times. Relax your jaw. Good. And then inhale, lift halfway. Keep your hands on the floor and extend out. And then bring your hands one at a time up onto your thighs. Lift your shoulders. Push through your hands and hinge yourself back up to seated. Good. Please step your feet in, bringing the heels beneath your knees and lift your arms over your head. As you exhale, lower the arms beside your hips. Follow the length of your breath. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. And one more time. Inhale, lift, keeping your arms raised. Bend your right elbow and hold your head. Now take your left hand, stretch it down, and lower your right ear over to your right shoulder. Flex your left wrist and stretch down through the palm, through the heel of your hand, and notice how you're opening the neck. And then inhale, lift the head, raise both arms, and then change. Take your left hand to your head, lower your right hand down, and bring your ear, your left ear, toward your left shoulder, flexing and reaching through the palm of your right hand. Good. And then inhale, raise back up, lifting both hands. Exhale, take your hands behind your back again. Hold the edge of the chair or interlace your fingers behind your back. Roll your shoulders open. Lift your chin up. Good. And then release and release the hands. Please turn to the right side of your chair. Now, if you have an arm on your chair, it's fine to just remain seated forward and put your left hand across to your right thigh. But if you can turn, sitting on the edge of the chair so your left hip and thigh are just a little off the seat of the chair, take your hands and reach around and hold the back of your chair with both hands. 
Now, keeping your hips level, rise up once again through the spine, push into the back of your chair and start to twist. Turn your waistline, your rib cage, your chest, your shoulders, and then finally turn your head. Look as far over that right shoulder as you are able to. And now breathe. Don't hold your breath. What I love about twists is you start in one direction and you finish often in the opposite. So it gives you a fresh perspective, an idea of being able to see more than you realize. On your inhale, turn back to the front. Keep your right hand on the edge of the chair and then take your left leg and slide it back. Once you have slid it back, first of all, start with the knee underneath your hip here. However, if you can go a little bit deeper, walk your leg back as far as you can like a lunge. Your right leg is fully supported. Now lift up through that left leg as much as you are able and then sweep your left hand in front of you. From the fingertips, draw your arm bone back and then lift your left arm next to your ear. Breathe here, keep your hips even with each other. Using that right hand for support, open the throat and lean back a little bit, influencing more of the shape of a back bend. You should also be feeling your left thigh open here as well. And then exhale, sweep your hand down. Good, slide your left foot back up and in. And then spin forward, come back to the original front of your mat. Open your feet apart, keeping your hips on your chair, hands to your thigh, roll your shoulders back and lean forward once again between both legs. Release your head, release your neck, and let your arms come down to the floor. Enjoy the breath. Notice how when you relax your head, when you let your neck and shoulders also soften, you feel this stretching across the lower back. Breathe into that. And then lifting, come out halfway once again, fingertips touching the floor. And then one hand at a time, push into the thighs, lift your shoulders, inhale, rise up back to seated, and step your feet in. This time, turning to the left. So turn to the left, keep your hips on your chair, Good. Put both hands on the back edge of your chair and twist to the left. Turning your head, look over your left shoulder slowly and then deepen your breath. Rotations are very good for also stimulating and moving your organs, particularly your digestive system. So as you breathe here in this twisted action, deep, slow breaths. Recognize any tension and where you may be holding it. That may be typically across your forehead, maybe your jaw, your shoulders. See if you can relax some of that tension away and just focus right here with this breath moving in and back out. And then inhale, turn forward, continue to face to the left and keep your left arm on your chair. Slide your right foot back. Now it's completely fine just to keep the knee under your heel. I want you to tuck under so you feel the front of your thigh stretching. If you can slide your right leg further back, find that. And then lift your right hand in front of you. From your fingertips, draw that arm bone back. Keep the arm back, the arm bone and the shoulder joint connected. And then raise your arm up next to your ear. Pull up through that arm as you stretch back through your uh, right heel here, feeling that you're stretching the front of your right thigh. And then begin to lean back just a little bit, creating more of a back bend. Enjoy your breath. This is the antidote of being seated for far too long, and all of us have been over this pandemic year. So just feeling how you open the front of your body. And then bring your right hand back down. Slide your right foot forward. Turn forward to the original front of your mat again. And plant your feet. Good. Lower the hands. Shake your hands gently. Roll your shoulders back a few times. Enjoy your breath. Good. And now take your right foot, cross it on top of your left leg. Now, if you can't get the foot, the ankle on top of your thigh, you can slide your left leg out 
and maybe slide it down your shin bone a little bit. What we're trying to do here is stretch the outer edge of your right hip. Please flex your right foot, hands on your legs. Once again, lift your spine, roll your shoulders back, and then lean beyond your legs. Notice how that begins to stretch the outside of your right thigh into that outer right buttock. This is the hip rotator, and these muscles get very tight as well when we sit for too long. So part of what you're doing here with this chair yoga session is maybe learning a few things that you can add in just a little bit. Maybe it only takes like two minutes, five minutes of your day just to stretch open through the body. With your inhale, raise back up to the middle. Step your right foot down. Cross your left foot over your right leg. Find the best position for your leg. Flex the ankle. Lift your spine and lean forward. Keep your shoulders on your back and try to relax your arms a little bit, but without dropping your head down. So keep the front of the throat long as well as the back of your neck. Good feeling into that outer left hip. Breathe in, maybe even close your eyes. Make sure you're not tightening your jaw, clenching your teeth. Good. With your inhale, come back up to the middle, lower that foot, and then lift up to standing. From standing, I'd like you to take your chair and turn it away from you so the seat of the chair is now facing you. Put your hands on your knees, sliding your hands down to your kneecap, and stretch your hips back like you're seated in a, toss, a high chair. So this squat position. Now we're just going to arch and round our back a few times. So when you exhale, tuck in, lower your chin, round your back. And then inhale, look up and arch. And exhale and round. Inhale and arch. And one more time, exhale and round. Good, inhale, hold the squat, keep your knees bent, and then reach your hands out onto your chair. So you may have to walk a little bit further away from your chair. What I want you to find here is that you're getting a nice long stretch through your arm. Push your hands into the seat of your chair and bring your head down so your ears are lined up between your upper arms. Now, as you press your hands against your chair, draw your shoulder blades toward your spine and then lift your hips just a little bit more. You should start feeling the back side of your legs stretching open here. If you can stretch your legs a little straighter, find that. But we want to keep a nice flat back so that you're not rounding your back to do this pose, but feeling the lumbar curve, the lower back curve here. Find the best place for you to stop here, pushing your hands into your chair. You should maybe feel a stretch along the edge of your shoulder blade, opening the shoulders. Good. And then walk your hands back up toward the edge of your chair. Lift your hands to the edge of your hips. Lift your shoulders toward the ceiling and raise up to standing. Good. Release your hands. Shake them a few times. Inhale. Lift your arms overhead. And then lower your hands down. And one more time, lift your arms overhead. Come through a squat, keeping your arms lifted. Good, lower your hands to the seat of your chair. Push your legs back a little bit straighter, stretching through the back of the leg, keeping the lumbar curve, pushing through the fingertips, through the palms of your hands. Good, and then inhale, look up. Walk your hands toward the edge of the chair. Good, lift your hands to your hips. Pull your shoulders up, and one more time, rise up to standing. Good, release your hands. Move through a squat, holding your kneecaps with your hands, and round your back once again, tuck. And then look up and open. And round, tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin. And then inhale and open. And one last time. Exhale and round. Good. And release. Push down. Rise up to standing. 
and then sit down on your chair once again. Once you're on your chair, move your heels directly under your knees and make sure there's some space. Now, avoid pushing your ribs forward. So just come into a very simple, neutral position. Relax your hands onto your thighs and let your elbows hang beneath your shoulders. Lift your chin. Close your eyes. Just notice your body. Notice how just a moment of two of moving the body, stretching out those typically tight places of your shoulders, of your lower back, and your legs. It just makes your body feel a little bit more vital, more open. Feel your breath. Slow it down. Calm your mind. And just let your mind rest on the motion of your breath. Allow yourself to listen outwardly into the room you're in, into the space you're in beyond the walls of the building. For us to be able to gain perspective, to see out into the distance, we have to be able to slow down. We soften and we remember the gifts that we can find even in the very challenging times. Recognizing and honoring our strength our creativity, our fortitude, our care. Think of the good things that you have found over the course of this year. Try to keep your mind resting on that. Stay with your breath. Let yourself feel grounded and steady. Carl Jung once said, even a happy life cannot be without a measure of darkness. And the word happy would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by some sadness. It is far better to take things as they come along with patience and equanimity. So enjoy your evening. Celebrate all that you have done this year. Celebrate your colleagues and the community of people who have banded together to teach and care for your students. We are so very grateful for all you have done. So I invite you just to take a deep breath in and joining your hands back to the center of your heart as a way, a gesture of just honoring yourself. Please take good care of yourself in these coming days as the school year winds to an end. Take good care of yourself over the summer. And I invite you to bow to yourself. And then as you lift your chin, release your arms and slowly, slowly open your eyes once again. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you for having me. Peace. All right. Well, 
I hope you all enjoyed that session. I hope you are feeling a little bit more relaxed, maybe a little more balanced. Maybe you just needed a few minutes to kind of reset and refresh. So that was our final activity for this, this session of Evening for Educators. Again, I wanna thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you for being willing to, to try something new maybe. Maybe you got a little messy, I know I did. <laughs> um, maybe you felt a little bit more relaxed and, and took a moment for yourself that maybe you wouldn't have had today. So we just wanna thank you all so much um, for everything you've done this year, for everything you always do for our students, for our communities every year, all the time. Um, so thank you so much. I want to say a special thanks to Stacy Collins from City Yoga, to Julie Hansard, our artist. And if you were able to get one of our swag bags, if you're local, I want to give a little shout out to Suzanne from Karoka Essentials who created these. And um, if you are local or you're, you find yourself near Columbia, we do have a few more bags. So just pop in, show your teacher ID. You get free admission all week for Teacher Appreciation Week. So um, feel free to come in and grab one. If you have any questions for me um, about anything from this session or anything I might be able to provide in terms of resources or, or ideas or connections to the folks we, we heard from tonight, I would be so great, so happy to, to ch chat with you. So I'm going to drop my email into the chat. Oh, I'm so glad you're loving the candles. Yeah, I love her work too. <laughs> All right. You can reach me at Columbia Museum, G Barlow at Columbia Museum .org. It's in the chat there for you. My name is Glenna Barlow. I'm the Curator of Education here at the Columbia Museum of Art. So if there's anything you need, um, I, I try to um, champion the museum as a place for teachers to land for resources and whatever you might need. So if there's anything we can do to make your, your lives just a, a teeny bit easier, we, we are trying to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope to see you back at the museum or uh, in here or, or online. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, hearts. <laughs> I love seeing all your messages. Thanks, everybody. All right. I'm just going to read through the chat. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Bye bye.